All right, guys. I know it's been a while. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been kind of busy. I'm back here in China. There's been a lot of stuff going on, but uh, today I'm like, I gotta make a video for you guys. So let's go. What is up, everybody? It's Jake here, back with another video. And today I've got the Galaxy A9 from Samsung. This is a mid-range device, and uh, I'm not gonna do a full review or anything. I'm just gonna share some of the things that I like about this phone, and some of the things that I don't like about this phone, and some of the things that's like kind of meh about this phone. You know what I'm saying? Like. I wouldn't say I like it, but I wouldn't say I hate it either. So let's begin. But starting off by getting the specs out of the way and should be on the screen right now. If you're interested, pause it and read it, but I'm not going to waste any time on it. All right. Some of the things that I like about this phone first, the build quality. I mean, you, you can't really complain about the build quality on this phone, like glass on the front and back metal frame along the sides. and. Uh, it's kind of a fingerprint magnet, but what can you do? It's kind of expected from an uh, all glass design from Samsung. It feels pretty good in the hand, it feels premium. If you close your eyes and the hand this phone to you, you wouldn't be able to tell this is actually a mid range smartphone. Like the feel in the hand is just great. But just like every other uh, phone with a glass bag, it's kind of slippery. But I mean, you can always slap on a case or something. So yeah, no big deal at all, but build quality overall, I'm definitely uh, really impressed. Next, the fingerprint scanner, and I'm definitely blown away by the fingerprint scanner on this Galaxy A9. Uh, it's fast, it works 100% of the time, and I think they use the same fingerprint sensor as they did on the Galaxy S7 Edge. So this is a fingerprint scanner from a flagship device, and I'm really impressed, it's fast, it's accurate, works all the time unlocks my phone very fast and i'm definitely feeling it moving on this is probably my favorite feature of this phone and that is the battery life this thing got a 4100 milliamp hour battery which is kind of expected from a six inch uh, device like this and the battery life is just as good as it sounds i've been averaging about uh, seven to eight hours of screen on time Sometimes if I use it very heavily, playing games all day or shooting videos all day, I still get six hours of screen on time, something like that, which is very good for a mid-ranger like this. And there was one day I got 10 hours of screen on time on this phone. Uh, I, I didn't know how, but the battery life on this phone though, you don't have to worry about it because it's just really good. And it lasts me around two days usually because I'm not a heavy user, but yeah, the battery life, favorite feature on this phone. Personally, so now let's move on the things that's kind of meh about this phone Which like I said before I wouldn't say I like it, but I wouldn't say I hate it either starting off with the camera This thing has a 13 megapixel camera and uh, in daylights is not really that bad uh, I'll show you a few samples that I took and it's not really that bad um, You get a little bit of detail dynamic range is okay, but it's definitely not the best like compared to all the flagships up there is nowhere it's not it's not even close to them but when the light deems down that's where it suffers in low light conditions this camera is pretty much trash um, the image is just starting losing details and uh, there's lots of noise pictures tend to be uh, really warm like there's you can see like the whole thing is yellow and it's just not good this is definitely a mid-range camera um, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of understandable from a mid-range device, but for the price, I don't think it's justifiable. But I'll talk about price in a minute. But uh, this camera, though, I wouldn't say I like it, but it's definitely not the worst. Next, the display. This thing has a 1080p six-inch display, and for six inches with the 1080p resolution, uh, it's not as sharp as Quad HD. But if you're a normal consumer. You're not really able to tell the difference, but it's an AMOLED, so that's a good thing. The color is kind of rich. It's kind of too colorful, to be honest, because, I mean, you can kind of expect uh, the rich colors from an AMOLED display, but this thing is just way too colorful. It's vivid, but I wish Samsung can tone this down a bit, as it's just not really true to life. Moving on, we got performance and user experience. And this thing is running TouchWiz, and we all know about TouchWiz is not the best looking software out there but this year samsung really uh, spent time with uh, their software and uh, really made a really huge improvements on their software and the a9 is no exception the software is really good it's fast it's snappy uh, i've been using this thing for well over a month now 
and I haven't experienced any lag or stutter which is really good and for a mid-ranger like this it's really impressive but if you've used TouchWiz before, you know what it's like to use TouchWiz. It's just way too much bloatware, way too much features that you wouldn't even use. And for example, the settings menu, there's like two full pages of things that so, some of them you just won't even touch it in like 100 years. For example, SIM card manager. Like this thing is, <laughs> you, you wouldn't even touch it in like 100 years. So stuff like that, little things like that makes this thing a little bulky if you will and uh, it's just not as clean as some of the uh, better UIs out there like the HTC Sense or even Oxygen OS on the OnePlus 3. Right, finally so let's move on to the things that I hate about this phone that I absolutely hate about this phone. First the speaker. So the speaker right here it's a little grill right here bottom mounted and I gotta say my finger is pretty much covering this speaker up 100% of the time when I'm using the phone. Like seriously, when I'm holding the phone in portrait, my pinky is always supporting the phone like this and there goes the speaker. And when I'm holding the phone in portrait, speaker covered up. So, you know, when I play audio, I always have to move my finger around to so that I can hear the damn thing, which is kind of annoying. And the speaker, when it's playing, it gets kind of loud. It's definitely not the loudest, but it gets kind of loud, but it sounds a bit tinny and uh, it's not the best sounding speakers and it's super easy to cover it up by your fingers. Super annoying. I absolutely hate it. It's trash. Next, and this is only for uh, folks in China. If you happen to be in China, there's no Google service on this phone. So. I picked this thing uh, here in China and uh, I try to install Google things on here like Google Plus and everything and when I try to run it, it just didn't work because I don't have the, the framework or the, the firmware or whatever. I tried to get it, I looked up online but it's really annoying and I need to pay for the VPN and stuff like that. Uh, it's just really annoying. So uh, if you happen to be in China, this is going to be the pain in the butt and you don't want to get into it. And I'm also a heavy Google user so this drove me crazy. And last but not least, the price. So I picked this thing up at a local store and it ran me about 3200 RMB which is about $500 US. And if you think about it, 500 bucks for a mid-ranger with mid-range mid specs and camera it's not really worth it but if you only look at the phone by itself without the price this is a great phone this is pretty much the best mid-ranger out there like it's got flagship level build quality flagship level fingerprint scanner flagship level battery life etc overall this is a great phone and so if you're a samsung fan and you don't have enough money to spend on those samsung flagships like the uh, S7 Edge or the uh, Note 7, this is pretty much your best choice. But if you're like me, you're not a fan of any of these brands, you might want to look elsewhere because I'm pretty sure you can get a better phone with a better price. Anyways, that's been my thoughts on the Galaxy A9. Feel free to leave comments if you got any uh, comments. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss any tech videos like this one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.